Welcome back. You're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by Vion and Dell on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Dr. Amy Abernathy, the Principal Deputy Commissioner and Acting CIO at the Food and Drug Administration. Now, Amy, before break, we were starting to learn about how you guys are moving to the cloud. We learned about the, the three kind of ideas that underpin your cloud strategy, access, use, and security. All of that also now falls into this IT modernization, digital transformation strategy. Talk a little bit about your plans there, because obviously, as you said, the cloud is a piece to the bigger strategy. Absolutely. So I joined as CIO in April 2019, as I mentioned, and in September 2019, we announced FDA's Technology Modernization Action Plan, otherwise known as our TMAP. And TMAP has three core elements. The first is to modernize our IT environment, including a cloud forward strategy. Modernizing our IT environment includes not just the cloud forward strategy, but also how do we improve the voice and visibility and capabilities of our workforce? What is the right organizational um, approach as a technical organization and also the governance approach for how our technical organization and our technical decision making fits into the agency. So these were all elements critical for the first part of the TMAP. The second part of the TMAP is really a focus on starting to demonstrate capabilities of a modern IT and data organization through use cases or proof points. So this is our product orientation. And the idea in part two of TMAP is to help the agency writ large imagine the possible through these use cases and also understand what do we need to build as core central capabilities from an enterprise perspective. And an example of that is that um, we have started to build enterprise data lakes in order to allow across our different product centers at FDA, so for example, drugs and biologics and devices and food, to be able to allow cross collaboration around the same data sets so that we can then solve problems that use data from, from, from multiple points across the agency. And that proof point or use case starts to demonstrate what's possible when we build better technical capabilities internally. The third part um, of the TMAP is to open up our communication channels with the broader community of data and technology stakeholders so that we can describe as an agency what we think are gonna be the important technical capabilities to build across life sciences and food industry and animal industry in the future. And also we can under, understand what kinds of ideas and capabilities are um, moving forward in the landscape of the industries that we centrally regulate. And so that kind of communication channel allows us to say, let's think about solving the following problem. So for example, blockchain as a way of solving for track and trace for the food industry or for drugs. And so these are the kinds of things that happen in the third part of TMAP. So that is our technology modernization action plan. And as you can see, cloud is a key part of getting there. All right, a couple of things to, to back up there on. Let me start with the uh, TMAP. So you, you launched it in September 2019. I'm sure there's a set of milestones and, and, and goals around them. Let's start with the modernization of the IT environment. You said it's not just improving the uh, moving to the cloud, but really the, I think you said the voice and visibility of our workforce, technical governance approach, decision making, all those important kind of under things that, that again, I'll go back to underpins good technology. Let's start with the governance piece. How have you approached that? So when we first start off with the Technology Modernization Action Plan, our governance model was predominantly a technical governance model. Um, each of our product centers, so as I mentioned, FDA is these different product centers. You can imagine they're like our business units, so drugs and biologics and food. And each product center had a technical representative onto the overall CIO council, but it was largely disconnected from the business. So we created a new governance model that had several features. Um, one was each of the business units or product centers, as we call them, has not only a technical representative, they have a business representative. And then both of those individuals have to be high enough in the organization to represent decision making. The second is that we really clarified 
the financial decision making, not just in line with Fatara, which we were previously doing, but making sure that this was well understood within the day-to-day -day -day financial workings of our overall agency, so that everybody started to align on what business decisions we were making as an agency, not just um, from the CIO perspective. So that was a second key difference. And then the third was we up-leveled where the Governance Council reports in the agency so that there's visibility at the highest level of the agency. And because I'm the Principal Deputy Commissioner, that really helped because I could help to maneuver the placement of the governance model at a visibility level that then allows us to push that forward. So many times when, it, when you talk about governance, that gets kind of lost in the shuffle. People, it's like enterprise architecture, people yawn and go, wow but but if you have the right governance in place then moving forward with initiatives which gets to the second uh, focus of, of the technology kind of roadmap makes things easier so when you start to demonstrate those capabilities you have that buy-in has, has that been a really big difference or helped you kind of maybe even accelerate some of this digital transformation yeah it's you know we're we're, we're still in baby steps um and I, I see the importance of continuing to learn as we do but, you know, absolutely. So, you know, think about the pandemic where we are now all moving to teleworking. We historically in our old um, governance model, which we actually called the CIO council, and now we call it the tech council. Fascinating how we've changed the language. But in our old model, we would have been very focused on sort of a lot of the minutia of the decision making, the number of VPNs we have and those kind of things, as opposed to we want our entire workforce to be able to telework. What's that going to take? And how do we make the right business decisions as the agency? So we've moved from predominantly a set of speci very specific technical decisions in the governance model to what is the overall objective and the outcome that we would like to get to? And then what do we need to do from a business perspective and an overarching technical strategy perspective to get us there? And that's just one example that you know, is fairly near term but we've been practicing as we move through these, right leveling the discussion so that it's appropriately strategic um, while also thinking about our technical capabilities. You bring up the pandemic, I got to ask the question about telework. How has FDA done? You obviously were doing this Zoom video from home, of course, uh, but how have you guys uh, fared during the pandemic? Uh, you Things have worked? Um, you know, so as an agency, uh, <laughs> we, we were, um, ready to telework beforehand in that we had all of the right contractual elements in place, et cetera, but we had never pressure tested the ability to have the entire agency telework at once, let alone for um, the duration that we've now started to experience as the pandemic, plus all of the video capability and large um, uh, networking capability, et cetera, that's needed. And, and in fact, we haven't missed a step. It's been quite remarkable. The, the things that we've run into that we've needed to think our way through, um, at, at one was the last mile problem. We, we needed to help um, to do a lot of um, last mile problem solving with different um, people who work in our agency. And we needed to see that as part of our core competency of what we helped to problem solve. Because you know at the end of the day, as the technical org, it still looks like our responsibility, even if it's your local ISP, right? Um, the, the second kind of example that we needed to, to, to solve for was, um, you know, really trying to, to make sure that we had enough VPN capability. Um, we had enough VPNs, but we needed to, to make sure that we sort of um, taught our, our agency um, uh, good VPN hygiene, I'd like to call it, um, which uh, was, um, uh, you know, just making sure that people knew when to turn their VPNs off and those kind of things. What we found as a part of the teleworking is we managed it very well from a technical perspective, but do you know what was most important? It was the comms side. So we started a um, weekly, almost like newsletter, which was a little fun. We decided to try and you know bring a smile to people's days, but also had sort of tips and tricks that people needed in order to figure out teleworking at scale in the first couple of weeks. And it was remarkable how well that was received. We doubled down on making sure we had enough help desk support and then said, call us as opposed to don't call us, um, which 
really helped to create a sense of confidence that we've got your back. And then we said, we've got your back. And the other thing that we did was we established a weekly teleconference with all of the IT representatives in each of our business units or product centers so that we, they knew we had their back and we were ready to um, really problem solve along with them. And those elements, I think, have got us over what could have been a very difficult early hump and allowed us then to get into a pretty comfortable cadence of how to do this. You can't underestimate the importance of communications because as I've heard, you communicate, you communicate, and then you continue to communicate. Yes. So kudos to you guys for thinking of something just very simple, but, but very effective, it sounds like. Uh, Amy, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we can continue your conversation about your IT modernization priorities and strategy. My guest today is Dr. Amy Abernathy, the Principal Deputy Commissioner and Acting Chief Information Officer at the Food and Drug Administration. I'm Jason Miller, and you're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by Vion and Dell on Federal News Network. <laughs> 